All right, you're riding along with Battalion Chief Derek Meckler today out of Battalion 1, which is located and based out of Headquarters Fire Station at 801 Market Street. It's very important because Battalion 1 is always going to be driving by themselves, and so they're having to manage the radio and any kind of traffic that's coming across from the 911 center um, while also paying attention. And it's extremely important that when you're driving as you know your own personal vehicle, definitely in a, uh, a fire department vehicle, that you obey all stop signs, all traffic laws. Um, we're not above the law by any means. So that means even when I turn on my lights and sirens going to an active 911 call, um, I have to have due guard for everybody at a stoplight. And so even a green light, I will stop at that intersection and make sure I have eye contact with all drivers as I approach, which would be very similar to this right here. And once I confirm that everybody sees me, then I'll safely proceed on through that intersection. Right turns, turn signals, um, doing even at the very beginning, a, a pre-trip inspection every single morning when I come into work is also vital. Making sure that our headlights work, our horn works, our emergency signals work, sirens work, brake lights, um, every aspect of the vehicle. And if there's something that's not functional, making sure that we submit that report so we can have the service department look at it and get it back up to full operational condition. When traveling downtown, we have such a beautiful downtown, we have to be really, really mindful of pedestrians as well. We have tons of crosswalks down here. So in addition to the traffic, stoplights and such, um, making sure that we're aware of all those crosswalks when you're making a right turn or going straight. In school, they're gonna teach you most likely a 10 and two type steering wheel uh, hand or somewhere in this general area, but this just kind of gives you full control. It could be based around the concept if you were to have a tire blowout, if you were to hit a uh, uh, something in the road or debris, it just allows you to maintain stability when driving the vehicle down the road. Also, when driving around downtown, you have to be mindful of some of the old brickwork and cobblestones that we have on the road. So, just kind of slowly going across those so you don't end up jerking your vehicle around too much. As you can see right here, we've got four pedestrians that are at this crosswalk. And even though they have, well, now they have the, the walking sign and I have a green light. So it is incredibly important, even though I have the green light, to make sure I give them the right of way. Once they're completely clear, I'll make a right turn, make sure I don't have any other pedestrians, and then we'll proceed down Front Street. This is a crosswalk coming up that's in the middle of the road um, on a straightaway with no stop signs or anything. And it's North Carolina law that you actually have to stop for any pedestrian. So, I always find it to be good that I stop regardless, make sure I don't, I'm clear with no pedestrians and then I continue on. And again, for us in the fire department, that's gonna be the concept, whether we're going lights and sirens or just regular traffic as we are right now. This is an all way stop. So important with an all way stop is that if you had four vehicles all right here at the stop sign, you'll start with the first one and then you'll go clockwise around. Now for some education on what do you do if you're driving your car, you're 16 years old, you have your first car, you have your driver's license, you're driving down College Road and you see lights and sirens approaching you from uh, the rear. It's very important that you move over to the right. Unfortunately, a lot of times we see vehicles that will stop abruptly in front of us. They'll pull over to the left, but the move over law is to move to the right, stop your vehicle, allow that emergency vehicle to pass you safely, and then you can kind of continue on uh, with your agenda. Anytime you're approaching a scene where you see emergency vehicles already parked, let's say an accident on South College Road, and as you're coming up two stoplights ahead, you find that uh, there's a fire truck and an ambulance and some police cars and all their lights are on. Make sure that you slow down, even though it's a 45 mile an hour zone, make sure you approach it slow, drop down to 25 to 30 miles an hour and be prepared to stop. Do not drive through the scene, do not drive around fire trucks. And if you have some confusion, just make sure you ask before you proceed through that kind of a scenario. 
If you ever come across a situation to where you have a piece of fire hose that is laid across the road, never drive over fire hose. Why is that? So the damage to the fire hose itself, so it's gonna be, you know, connecting to a fire hydrant or to another fire truck. And so when you ended up having that scenario where a car drives over top of it, there could be gravel or other sharp objects, glass or anything that could puncture that fire hose, which would limit the amount of water that we may be able to get. We may have to end up shutting down operation and put down a new piece of hose. Now in North Carolina, you can turn right on red unless there is a sign posted up on the light itself that says no turn on red. And you also make notice that certain vehicles like school buses are not allowed to turn right on red at all. But in this case, we don't have that. So we can clearly look to our left, but we also have a crosswalk here. So we're having to look and kind of gauge two different things. We can see our crosswalk hand is up here saying the five seconds is gonna be a full stop for any pedestrians. But keep in mind, they do still have the right of way. So we're clear, we're clear with our pedestrians. We're gonna slowly move out into the intersection, confirm, and we are off. Most of your newer vehicles now have automatic lights that will come on called daytime running lights. A lot of your older vehicles, this vehicle specifically, I have to manually turn those headlights on. So if you are in a vehicle and your vehicle does not have automatic daylight, daytime running lights, I highly advise that every time you get into the car, like when you click your seatbelt, turn on your headlights, just because that gives more visibility to other drivers that are driving down the road and can de decrease the chances of somebody accidentally pulling out in front of you. Some other key areas that you have to be mindful of in the Wilmington area, downtown and on Market Street, uh, just north of 17th Street, is that we can have some very narrow streets, uh, which means if you're next to a larger vehicle, be mindful of that and do not try to stay parallel with that vehicle as you go down the road. Um, if you need to slow down, that's okay as well too. Just make sure that you're safe. As we approach up here, we've got vehicles that will be passing us on the left, but we also have multiple cars that are parallel parked over on the right hand side. Two items for this. One is again, if you need to slow down to make sure you can safely make the passageway through, that's fine. But when you park parallel park, if you can notice these vehicles right here have been smart about parking completely off the road. Your vehicle, no part of your vehicle can extend past that white line uh, that's listed over there for parallel parking. What that means is that if a vehicle was to accidentally hit your mirror or hit any part of your car and your car was over that white line, you actually could be held at fault uh, depending on the situation that the officer finds. What else does a battalion chief do during the day? So the battalion chief is over an entire district. And so battalion one specifically is gonna be over uh, the stations here in Wilmington that include Empey Park, station three over on Cinema Drive, the headquarters station, of course, at 801 Market Street, station five, which is located at Shipyard and Carolina Beach. And so a battalion chief starts their day every morning at seven o'clock in the morning where they're relieving the previous shift's battalion chief. And our most important task of the day is to make sure everybody has shown up to work that needed to show up to work and that all the apparatus are properly staffed. If we have anybody that has checked out sick for the day, that may be on vacation for the day, it's a vital piece for the battalion chief to make sure that we move people around to ensure that we have full operation from all the uh, fire apparatus. After we get that in place, um, we'll follow up and continue on any administrative tasks that we may have. Um, we'll check to see uh, 
what may have occurred the previous tour that we worked. A tour is a three 24 hour shift layout and we'll go and review back and see uh, the various fire apparatus when they've gone out to do fire inspections or follow up business safety surveys. And those simply are things to where we provide those to the public where we're showing up at a business and no charge whatsoever. We just kind of do a free safety walkthrough of that business and point out things such as you've got an extension cord and we shouldn't have an extension cord here. Or you need to have uh, properly uh, illuminated exit lights at exit doors. Just something that we can kind of go out there and educate the public and the businesses on. We also spend a lot of time with going out to schools. We'll help out with reading books at schools. Um, you know, pre-COVID, we did a lot more as far as school tours were concerned. Uh, both students would come to the fire stations as well as fire trucks going to the schools themselves. So just a variety of things that we do in addition to various calls. Now, we noticed right here, this is not a crosswalk, but this person approached this crosswalk rather rapidly. So just out of safety for them, I'm going to go ahead and slow down and stop and let them pass over safely. Training is another big part of our regular day. Um, we have companies, and when we say companies, the terminology is, you know, fire engine, fire truck, um, fire rescue. These units will go out and they will train. Sometimes they train locally at their station, or sometimes they go up to the Cape Fear North Campus, which is where our main fire training ground is located. And they can conduct training from everything from cutting open cars to throwing ladders, cutting holes in a, uh, in a roof. Um, pulling fire hose, connecting up water, training new probationary firefighters. So just a whole slew of various topics um, and areas that they can go through and, and complete training on a, on a daily basis. So we can stay, we can keep our skills extremely sharp. So we know you train once you have the job, but what does it take to, to have this kind of job? Like what kind of uh, education did you have to have? So for the Wilmington Fire Department, um, you have to be 19 years old. And, and I want to kind of start with, and you may hear this from, from other occupations and things, but this is truly the best job in the world. There's not a day that I come to work that I do not like coming to work. I look forward to coming to work. I have to be pried away sometimes just to take vacation. Um, every day is different. Every day brings challenges, just like anything else. But the fact that we get to show up and be there to help our citizens and to help the public in their time of need um, is, is an amazing thing to, to, to be able to do on a daily basis. Um, in addition to that, if you, if you like challenges, the fire service is for you. You've got to be able to adapt and overcome. And so you could show up to a scene where um, a specific scenario, you know, is, is in place and you have to be able to um, overcome that scenario. So it's almost kind of like putting a jigsaw puzzle together at times, but it's absolutely the best, best career choice that you could ever choose. Um, if, if you like working with your hands and you like being active and physically fit and above all, what, what greater good is there to be able to help um, a, a friendly neighbor or, a, or citizen. Outside of that, you have to be 19 years old. Um, you have to be um, a high school graduate, uh, maybe GED as well too. Um, once you apply though with the city, once it posts, you simply will go through a process and you can go online and you can actually conduct and you can do practice tests online. It's a civil service test that you would take after you do your application. Then you would go out to the North Campus. You would be invited back to do a physical agility test, which is going to be going through and climbing a ladder and, you know, connecting some fire hose together and some various other things. And once you pass that, you'll go on to two final interviews and then the selection process takes place. You don't have to have any experience or background. Me personally, I started off when I was 15 years old as a junior firefighter, much like you. I didn't even have my driver's license yet. And so, but I always wanted to be a firefighter. Every time a fire truck would go by when I was probably six years old, my eyes were glued to that. But when I was 15 and I could join the local volunteer fire department, I did that. And while I couldn't go inside of a burning house, I still had the capability of being able to learn a lot about the fire service and how it operates. And so, Fast forward, I joined, ended up joining Wilmington. It's a career fire department and you can do that as well too. But with Wilmington, you don't have to have any previous experience. We have people from all walks of life that come in here. They, they have all types of backgrounds. Some of them have a college degree. Some of them do not. Some of them have been a plumber. Some of them work in construction. Let's listen to this call here. Respond 
Drive, 922 Hudson Drive, Cross Street Chalmers Drive, and Bragg Drive. Ported fire alarm. Coming in is a carbon monoxide alarm. Engine 7 will advise full code once we have it. Take off traffic PS4. PS4 Central Time is 1209. So that is a general type of call that will go on um, almost every single day. Whether it's a house or whether it's a commercial business, fire alarms. And fire alarms are in place to where, you know, if, if, if they were to be set off, it alerts the fire department so we can go versus uh, it getting to a stage in the in the fire growth to where it's beyond being able to be stopped. And so by them getting dispatched to a fire alarm, in this case, a carbon monoxide alarm, the person may have gas in their house or something. Um, they'll go out there and check it out with their meters. Zone 7 Alpha, Engine 7, Truck 7, Engine 7, Truck 7, Response, 922, Drive. That's the same call. So anytime you have a an alarm, whether it's a fire alarm or a carbon monoxide alarm, they're going to send both a fire engine and a fire truck to that call. So two pieces of apparatus will actually go to the call. In reference of emergency traffic, the very first one that is dispatched out will go emergency traffic to residential, whereas the truck, the fire truck, will actually go non-emergency to that call. Back to going and applying with the Wilmington Fire Department. Once you've made it through the selection process and you're giving an offer letter, then there'll be a specific date that is assigned for you to start our, the Wilmington Fire Department Fire Academy, the Recruit Academy. And when you show up on that date, we have one that's coming up on May the 10th, where we have 18, excuse me, we have 18 people that are being selected uh, for this upcoming uh, Recruit Academy. Those 18 individuals will now embark on approximately a six month adventure. Um, it will be some of the best times in your lives. You will make lifelong friends in the academy, but we will teach you everything that you need to know. You'll start off with, in this case, EMT basic, which is emergency medical technician at the basic level, which means that you'll be able to learn how to administer various uh, drugs. You'll be able to uh, get somebody oxygen, hook up an AED, um, basically anything that we do at our level when we show up with EMS uh, to an emergency medical call. Once you complete that program, then you're going to go right into the North Carolina Firefighter 1 and Firefighter 2 certifications, which will encompass everything from fire prevention, how to put on gear, how to breathe through the mask, throwing ladders, cranking a chainsaw, uh, putting out fire, um, every aspect of firefighting. Fire extinguishers will be, will be encompassed in the Firefighter 1 and 2 block. You'll also learn hazmat, hazardous materials operations and awareness to where you'll be able to understand the various dangers and levels of dealing with gasoline from vehicles and natural gas and other various entities. And then of course, you'll finish up with marine shipboard firefighting. Of course, we have a state port here in Wilmington, so that's a very vital piece for us, um, as well as receiving your car seat technician. So again, we can continue to help the public uh, by making sure that their newborn uh, son or daughter is, is definitely safe by giving them guidance on properly installing a car seat into the car. So once you graduate the academy, you come out with all of those certifications and then you're assigned to a company uh, within the city, at which point now you are starting your, your true career on shift as a firefighter with the city of Wilmington, and then you'll continue on uh, your training from that point forward. I've been with the department now for almost 17 years and I still train every single day. So it doesn't stop when you get done with the academy. It doesn't stop, you know, a couple months after the academy, you continue to hone your skills. And it allows for you based on which career path you go in the fire department to really have some amazing experiences that are available. So for me, I joined the hazardous materials team. The hazardous materials team has allowed me to visit places and go to schools in Pueblo, Colorado. I've been to Mercury, Nevada. I've been to Baltimore, Maryland. Um, I've been to Pensacola, Florida. So, and all of that training that I've learned, I've brought back and been able to share with our other firefighters and bring that mindset um, and that advanced level of training back to Wilmington as well. It's a great day to be doing this ride along. The weather is amazing for our fifth day of March where we have a lot of people, a lot of pedestrians out running and walking and taking their pets for a walk. Talking about weather, the alternative to today is what we've had for the past couple of weeks, which is just what seemed like never ending rain. 
And when it rains, there's a lot of other variables that can kind of really come into place other than just dry, dr driving on dry uh, paved roads, including how fast you can stop. When there's water on the road, you can hydroplane. Your stopping distance is definitely decreased which means that you've got to stay now three or four car lengths back from every vehicle versus, you know, maybe under normal drive, drive conditions a little bit less. Being mindful, making sure your windshield wipers are functional. You don't want to wait till it's pouring down rain to be driving down the road knowing that you still can't see because your windshield wipers are, are dry rotted or not functional. Give yourself a lot of extra time if it's raining. So if you're supposed to be at work at eight o'clock that morning and usually it takes you 10 minutes to get to work, you can always go with the old uh, military slogan, which is if you're not 15 minutes early, you're late. But if it's raining that day, it's very smart to maybe even add some additional time onto that to make sure that you can safely get there while also staying under the speed limit based on the weather conditions. Well, I appreciate you guys joining me today for a nice ride along. Hopefully you have some key takeaways um, that you can take back and uh, um, and be safe drivers and uh, you know be responsible in the community. But furthermore, I would love to see you in uh, the next recruit class when you turn 19. We're, uh, we, we hire typically every year. Make sure you go and put an interest card in with the uh, City of Wilmington Human Resources Department so that way they can alert you via email whenever we do have a hiring. Uh, but it is in fact a uh, one of the greatest jobs in the world. So um, I invite you to check it out and see if it's something that may be of interest to you. But more importantly, be safe out there, obey traffic laws, take your time, don't rush, leave early, and then you'll be safe. But hopefully I won't see you out there at a car wreck, but I'll see you out there when you come and visit us for a tour.